Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The Panama Canal is one of the most strategically important waterways in the world. And for the United States Navy, it's a vital shortcut that links the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The canal drastically reduces the time and distance required for a ship to reposition between theaters, saving over 8,000 nautical miles. This capability enhances the Navy's global mobility, allowing for faster response times in crises and more efficient deployment schedules. U.S. Navy warships, ranging from destroyers and cruisers to amphibious assault ships and support vessels, frequently use the canal to transit between fleet operations. For instance, a ship returning from a deployment in the Pacific might use the canal to reach its home port on the East Coast or vice versa. This route isn't just faster, it's safer and more economical in terms of fuel and logistics. Time saved at sea can be critical in rapidly evolving geopolitical situations, particularly in regions like the South China Sea, the Persian Gulf, or the Caribbean. When a Navy ship approaches the canal, the process is far more intricate than a simple point-to-point -point passage. Navigation through the Panama Canal requires extreme precision, especially considering the size, weight, and draft of military vessels. The canal itself spans 50 miles and includes a series of locks that lift ships 85 feet above sea level to the level of Gatun Lake, and then lower them back down on the other side. Once a Navy ship is cleared for canal transit, it's assigned a Panama Canal pilot. This expert takes control of navigation while working closely with the ship's captain and bridge crew. Despite the advanced systems onboard modern U.S. Navy ships, like radar, GPS, and satellite communications, they must fully yield to the canal authority during the transit. The pilot is legally in charge, and the ship's crew follows their guidance precisely. It's very different than I thought that it was gonna be, actually. Every part that goes into it, there are so many different people. We have people pushing us right now, making sure that we're staying straight. We have mules taking us along the, the sides of the canal to make sure that we stay straight. And there's just a whole lot that goes into it that it's way more involved than I thought that it was. One of the most iconic features of the canal is the lock system. These locks are essentially giant water elevators that raise and lower ships in stages. Inside the locks, large warships are assisted by specially designed electric locomotives known as mules. These mules run on rails alongside the locks and are used to guide and stabilize the ship to prevent contact with the lock walls. Their movements are coordinated via radio and cable systems, all overseen by the lockmaster and the canal operations control. Their synchronization is critical a single misalignment could cause hull damage or delay. 
both of which are unacceptable for military vessels. For decades, the only way to deliver goods from the Atlantic region to the Pacific was to navigate around the southern tip of South America. This added thousands of miles and up to several weeks to each voyage. However, in the 1880s, the French began working on a canal through the narrowest section of Panama in Central America. Finished by the United States in 1914, the Panama Canal measured 51 miles long and featured numerous innovative technologies. To this day, the canal remains one of the most important waterways in the world, allowing ships to bypass the long and treacherous journey around South America. This saves shipping companies billions and helps further facilitate international trade. More than 14,000 ships, roughly 5% of the world's shipping, use the Panama Canal each year. While the Panama Canal remains a vital asset to U.S. military mobility, it is not the only waterway that plays a role in global naval logistics. The Suez Canal, located in Egypt, is another critical artery. Being one of the world's busiest shipping lanes and a key trade route between Europe and Asia, the Suez Canal connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea through the Isthmus of Suez. The first recorded attempt to build a canal in this region dates back to the 13th century BC under the reign of Pharaoh Ramses II. However, it was not until the 19th century that the project was successfully completed. French engineer Ferdinand de Lesseps was granted a concession by the Egyptian government in 1854. And after 10 years of construction, the canal officially opened in 1869. Transporting a massive vessel like an aircraft carrier through the Suez Canal requires meticulous coordination. Four, the Suez Canal plays a critical role in bridging the Mediterranean and the Arabian Sea, essential for moving ships between the U.S. 6th and 5th fleets. The Canal Authority evaluates each vessel's size, draft, and operational parameters. Approval must be granted, and a local canal pilot joins the ship to guide it through. Tugboats assist throughout the transit. Especially in areas with tight turns or narrow lanes, the carrier may also reduce speed to as low as 6 to 8 knots to ensure safe passage. The entire operation is synchronized between the bridge crew, the pilot, and supporting tug operators. Depending on traffic, it can take anywhere from 11 to 16 hours for a full transit. Naval transits are prioritized, but still subject to local regulations and environmental conditions. Spaceboard control, spaceboard control. This is Musahib Tagmaster. Yes, Musahib, go ahead. Vessel number 13, ever given, run aground, run aground. Going again, vessel number 13. On March 23rd, 2021, the ever given, a container ship with a capacity of 20,388, 20-foot equivalent units, ran aground in the southern part of the Suez Canal, 
blocking the crucial waterway. The vessel, one of the largest container ships globally, became lodged sideways across the canal, preventing the passage of other ships. The Suez Canal Authority and local authorities immediately began efforts to assess the situation and formulate a plan for the vessel's removal. Once the ship's load had been lightened, the salvage crew proceeded with one of the primary objectives, which was to clear sediment from around the ship's bow and stern. The accumulation of sediment contributed to the vessel's grounding, and removing it was essential for refloating. Dredgers worked to create a deeper channel in the canal by removing sediment from the canal bed. In addition to dredging, salvage crews also used tugboats to push and pull the ship. International salvage teams, including experts from the Netherlands and Japan, were involved in the operation. These teams brought specialized equipment and expertise to assist in the challenging task of freeing the grounded vessel. The rescue operation was hampered by strong winds and high tides. However, after six days of work, salvage crews were finally able to free the Ever Given on March 29, 2021. For strategic naval movement, major international ports also play a significant role in maintaining maritime dominance. Take, for example, the Port of Amsterdam. While not as transformative for global shipping as the Panama Canal, it remains a key regional hub that drives European trade and innovation. Amsterdam handles around 80% of the total cargo moving to and from Europe. It is technically the fourth largest port on the continent, but is also one of the most technologically advanced. Closely connected with the historic city and its famous canals, the port serves as a logistical hub for petroleum, foodstuffs, and industrial goods. It employs roughly 70,000 people and operates around the clock. Regardless of weather conditions, the port is also a global leader in green energy initiatives. It was one of the first to begin integrating wind turbines into its infrastructure and has an ambitious goal to be 100% climate neutral by 2050. These sustainability efforts align with broader EU goals and position the port as a model for future maritime hubs. Modern naval logistics rely on a network of global infrastructure. For the U.S. Navy, the ability to move warships quickly and securely through strategic choke points like the Panama and Suez Canals ensures sustained maritime dominance. 
these engineering marvels and port systems may appear to be routine passages to the casual observer, but for naval planners, they are the arteries through which global presence, deterrence, and defense flow. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.